up. Talk to okay. the camera, okay? Yes. Don't look at Robert. There's two cameras. Hi there. One for each other. <laughs> I guess we're on. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to another exciting edition of Cambridge Inside Out. My name is Robert Winters. And to my far left, your far right. My name is Susanna Sagat. Welcome. And in the middle. I'm Dennis Carlone, city councilor in Cambridge. Excellent. Here we are. And just to start out the show with a fun factoid. We like to do I? that. Sure. Okay, I have um, very important news. From April 10th, 2014, to April 19th, 2014, it's 10 days of palindromes. No matter, <laughs> <laughs> no matter which way you look at it, Backwards or forwards, it's the same number. Really? Four, 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 fifteen, fourteen. Really? It's a palindrome. Okay. Well, that's pretty important news. You're welcome. I better write that down. <laughs> <laughs> there'll be a there'll be a special congratulations <laughs> order filed at the next city council meeting, I'm sure. <laughs> All right. Um, anyway, um, I guess it's interesting. We've now, I think, you are fifth. City Council, councillor to have on the program this year. Well, I'm, I'm very honored to be here. <laughs> you're, you're right in the middle. Yes, cool. that's me. All right. <laughs> and we're really right. happy to have you here, too. Well, thank you. All right, yeah, you know, I, and we'll have uh, more. Oh, we're going to cycle through the, the whole nine um, before, I think, mid-May. I think, I think that's kind of what we're scheduled for. And you rate each of them on how they performed? And well, we actually have a, a call-in show where people <laughs> rate you, and then we'll figure out who's off the council that way. I understand. That's right. It's a good system. Yeah. <laughs> actually, you There might be a recount, but uh, yeah, hopefully, no. hopefully not. No, no. <laughs> Enough of those. Actually, that's a topic we can bring up as well. Oh, man. Right. Uh, anyway, just to kick it off, um, one of the things we certainly like to do is just sort of get to know who our guests are a little mm -hmm. bit here. So, Councillor Carlo. Um, my, let me first just say, my first, the first time I've heard your name. Here it comes. No, 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 listen, listen. It was actually in the context of, I think it was early planning efforts around Kendall Square, though I know you were involved in a lot of other things. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, was former Councillor Ken Reeves used to say nice things about some of the planning efforts, That's things right. planned around Kendall, many of which actually weren't implemented, but, you know, there was some sort of good efforts in there. But... Uh, as a candidate, you spoke about um, uh, um, sort of your previous career before being an elected official. That's and, right. Uh, working in conjunction with the city of Cambridge for quite a, for several decades now. That's right. right. So when did you when did you first? Well, no, you were talking about how you first met him. Well, actually, it was when I first uh, I, I would, you you were more you were inspired by me in 1995 when I presented something on Kendall Square. That that must have been what you're remembering. No, actually, I was yeah, asked right. I was asked to summarize the efforts that the city had undertaken under Mayor Reeves to look at redefining Kendall Square, and I love that because. You know, basic city building, and some of it has happened. It's that we came up with ten or twelve principles, timeless principles, and some of those have happened. But before that, I did the East Cambridge Riverfront plan, and I believe we have a uh, yeah, actually, physical remnant. Yeah, I was going to say plan. here only because I know that during last year's city council campaign, you know, um, you know, when you were telling, introducing yourself to the voters, you'd say, you know, I, you know, was uh, involved in the East Cambridge Riverfront, plan. and it's a sort of abstract to most people. Yes, you're right. And I don't even know is it even on the city website online or anything like that. It, so it is a very poor copy. It's it been poor scanned. Copy. So, so this is a much better so, copy. So Look at that. I, you know, being being the the unofficial city archivist, I just want to say there really is. I am impressed. An East Cambridge Riverfront it's plan. You can you can open it up to the middle where the uh, rendering of the front was in and this was the first study that Here, the city did oh, oh Here, is it missing is it missing uh, maybe i have my pages off the there it is, there we go. is just missing? off just off center yeah i don't know if we can actually render it here Susanna will try but, um, to make this it was the that's, first that's, right? there that's it is. part of it there we go <laughs> it's a little uh, curved which is very fashionable well, now look look it's the water's flowing it's yeah really and it looks clean <laughs> yes and the All whole, right, whole idea right. was to make <laughs> that here was okay, this 40 acres on the river no, no, and a mule 
<laughs> that would have helped, and it was a real mess back then. I remember empty industrial buildings, I, the polluted land, parking lots. Yeah. Uh, MDC had salt storage leaching into the Lechmere Canal. It, it yeah. was, and in some ways, when areas are that bad, that's, that's when an opportunity. You, that's right. That's <laughs> when you get everybody to agree that my God, we have to do something. That's right. As opposed to most cities that are doing source okay, not great. It's much harder to make things happen. That's right. And I love that project. And the great thing about it is, you could tell me when to stop talking. No, no, about no, no, it. no, no, no. The great thing about it is. Uh, nobody thought much would come out of it. In fact, I was hired to do a zoning study, and we came up with the book, which is an urban design master plan, which showed what it could be. And then we based, that was what the plan was based on. And the city took land for open space and public improvements, including roads. And the T started looking at the new Leechmer station, which still hasn't been built, but everything else has been built. And it won many awards. It was the first major redevelopment in Cambridge, even preceded Kendall Square, which people don't recall. But the best part is the neighborhood supported it. One of the interesting things I like when I when I look I back at some of these that. publications, what was the we're year the, we're approximately? Here 1978. No I started in 76, and this came out in 78. Is this the first edition? Yes. Yes. Yes, it is. It's worth, see how much it's worth <laughs> on the back? Perhaps I can you turn it over on the back. It, it wow, was worth then three dollars. It was three wow. bucks. So it's it, now two ninety nine. I'm putting it on eBay. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. So one, I'll, I'll buy it. it. It's not there it. Go. I'll oh buy it. Goodness. There it is. There we go. The interest, one of the interesting things to me when I look back at some of these studies, um, many times when you look at a, a, a plan for an area in the city, or this or any other city, you see renderings for you know what somebody's vision of what's going to happen. One of the interesting things as I was looking through this book again um, is to see how much of it actually really was yes. put into place. So it really looks like the sketches. Yeah, and, I, I, and that's often not the case. <laughs> Thank you for noticing that. You're now on my reference list. Uh, the, the reason is, is that the zoning came after the plan, and the zoning made reference to the Green Book as the guide. And we did an ex extensive design review based on this and very detailed guidelines. So the goal was to implement this. Other, and the city took the land. Again, this was so down and out right. that the city was willing to do that, now, and it made all the difference. I seem to recall there was a time, so, a lot of years later, it was probably mid-90s, uh -huh. where somebody brought some sort of a legal action because of the front where they, it was uh, eminent domain taking, and eventually the city actually settled oh. for some of the parkland? Yeah, the city, uh, you're right. The front, which is the park between the river and what's now Land Boulevard, actually my design, that's the one area where it's changed. It was bigger. Yeah. That's right, it's just a chunked out That's right, that and, and the one lawyer representing a landowner said it, it's worth much more now, therefore we should get much more. Meanwhile, right. when, when the city took the land, it was worth what, it was nothing, it was right. a wasteland. Yeah. And as it got upgraded, they came back in. And, and I think in part, that's why the city's hesitant they, to do that now, yeah. because they got burnt. And yeah. frankly, they shouldn't have gotten burnt. That was a misjustice in, uh, in, some, in many ways, I think. No, okay. I, I agree. I, but, um, yeah, but, you know, it, sometimes it, you. It was quite a lesson. Yeah, <laughs> it, it it it's like if you make public improvement, you're going to pay for it twice, and it's really a, a negative on a city bettering itself. I think that's been changed, but I don't know for sure. Yeah. Well, before we keep talking about, I the like work, reminiscing, but go I, ahead. No, no, no. And I, I, this is. I, I'm going to read that pamphlet afterwards. Good. Um, the question that I have for you is, we, we're very thankful that you came to visit us when you were running for city I, I council. I enjoyed that, actually. And, and I really heard like... that's what made the difference in my election. <laughs> well, I don't know about that, but... I, I um... thought I was supposed to say that. <laughs> no, no, no. So that, nice. and I think that yeah. one of the questions we asked you was, you know, why are you running? Mm -hmm. So you've been involved with the city for many years. Yes, 30, uh, 30 years as 30 a consultant. 30 years trying to help improve the city. Now you've been an actual elected official for three months. Three months. So, is the answer different? Tell us, you know, why did you run? What? How are you helping? Mm -hmm. What? What's going on? 
Well, I, I think that's a great question, and I do feel good about that. And the reason at Urban Design Architect, I've done studies, other studies for Cambridge. I did the first North Point study. Mm -hmm. And although North Point was then discovered, um, it didn't get implemented the way I think it, it could have been, which I think in some areas would have been an improvement. Um, and I realized what the difference was is that I didn't make the decision to approve something. It was the council, eventually the council, planning board, obviously, and then the council. And you had to convince. That's right. And I've done award-winning studies for Plymouth that everybody loved, still not implemented. Studies in Chelsea, which are kind of implemented, and as I said, other studies in Cambridge and other places. And it dawned on me, <clears throat> uh, now that I'm older, I, I realize that I can probably have a greater influence on the council. The council approves all zoning, all up zoning, even mm -hmm. down zoning, ordinances, and to have that perspective on the on the council, I think is helpful. And uh, I'm trying right now, trying to avoid hitting the stone wall between uh, residential groups and developer groups or business groups and, and residents. And so I feel like I'm doing the same thing, except it's at a different level. And it's more about words. And when zoning comes in, Dennis Benzin and I are the two counselors that are the co-chairs of the ordinance committee. And I know when I see problems, and I can, with just a few words change, for instance, on guidelines, to be very specific about development in Central Square as it fronts Green Street or Bishop Allen, mm -hmm. that it should be finer in scale and relate more to the housing across the street. And obviously, Mass Avenue is a completely different scale. Everybody kinds <clears throat> and kind of knows that, but if you don't say it and say this is important, it won't happen right away. Actually, I would draw a bit of a parallel. I remember back up to, I think it was until two, either 2001, maybe, when Kathy Bourne was on the council. Yes. She, she served in a pretty important role yes. during those years as somebody who actually had the background when they were doing the um, disposition of the old firehouse in Kendall Square. That's right. You know, so she, was, she had a perspective she got it. that was very helpful. You know, I might, had a professional viewpoint. That's right, right as an architect. Know, right, and so in a city like Cambridge, actually, if you have nine city councilors, the ideal that we never achieve, but you know, the ideal would be if we could have nine people from various, really, very relevant walks of life that could really, really make for a very dynamic council that can actually, you know, be an expert body. And, and we have some of that on on this council, and so far we're respecting each other. Um, obviously, there's always going to be disagreement, but I totally agree. And if not that I was confident that we were going to win as a new person, but that was the one thing that I thought we had to our favor that we what can you play mean, a your role. Campaign? Yes, in the campaign that we could play a role that it's made us a little different than the other 25. Uh, and each, of course, mm -hmm. thought they were representing a point of view. But I totally agree. You know, the planning board has a a list of the kinds of people that should be on it, in a way, almost the council. Of course, who's going to say what nine no. it should be? That, that would be the, your the two vote, jobs. The voters are not always the best screening device. No, for that's true, too. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I, I agree, and you know, I feel it's the right place. Even if I just modify a word which helps avoid problems later on or misunderstandings, because reading anything, it's not like math where Things almost are you always. Gonna, are you going to take a swipe at No, my no, no. Profession? Where things almost always, and I'm saying almost always because I'm sure you know of a case where it's not true, it's either right or wrong. But, you know, when you're talking about city building and words in particular describing it, not drawings, boy, it can be interpreted in so many ways. Yeah, and actually, I've seen lots of examples over the years where there was imprecision in the way things were drafted and then. Uh, results snowballs. ensued, and people said, "Oh, if only we had remembered to do this." Back That's then. exactly right. I, I'll yeah, be honest happens. with you. I've been told many times <laughs> we should have listened to you, and it's not just me. It's other people who yeah. look at the big picture, and you know, what do you say? Yeah, <laughs> right. But so hopefully we can avoid some of that. Not all of it, but some of it. Now, there's one question I actually asked several of the actually the two new counselors mm -hmm. who were on the program uh, in past weeks. So I'm going to. Please. You're going to make number three here, which is that, you know, as you were when you were uh, 
working in conjunction with the city or just being a resident of the city or yes. then being a candidate, you might look forward to what the job you think the job is going to be. Mm -hmm. But then once you're actually in the job, mm -hmm. how what things are different or unexpected in the job yeah. compared to what you thought you would be Well, the, the good side, that's a great question, and um, I'd love to hear what other people say, so I'll be looking that up. But uh, uh, <laughs> the great thing is I'm an optimist, and I know some people might not think I am because I want us to study plans more and know what we're doing, but there are really some wonderful people in the city. I knew there were good people in the city, but even the people I didn't know, mm -hmm. I would say almost all of them, and the ones I don't know, I'm not sure yet, but I would bet have their heart in what they're doing, especially the leaders, really remarkable. Um, so it's more about uh, sharing information and getting the bigger picture, and it isn't, as a resident, it isn't everything we think it is. It, there are always other points of information that we don't get as a resident. So I'm not saying I have the secrets or the president's book of secrets or anything well, I'll, I'll like let, that. I'll, I'll let you know on the secrets. Yeah, I, I need to know them quickly. <laughs> but you do learn more and you understand the perspective and it's never as cut and dry as it seemed during the election process. Sure. So that's number one. Number two, you cut no, me no, off. No, 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 I didn't mean to cut Number you two, um, We're happy I really do think we have a, a great council group and, and um, so far everybody, honestly, everybody has been very positive. Mayor Marr, uh, who I've known for a long time, I have to say that uh, he said he never keeps grudges and I thought, oh, that's political talk. No, he's I'm good. impressed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I am impressed. And, um, and I really believe we can make a difference. I think Rich Ross... He, How many grudges did you try to make in three months? <laughs> How many what in three grudges months? Grudges did you try to make oh, in no, three months? No, well, you know, I, I initially voted uh, as mayor for councillor... Uh, oh, oh, the mayor's A race. different councillor, let's yeah. leave it like that, who's yeah. now running for lieutenant governor yeah. and could win very easily. He's polling well, I hear. Uh, yes, and and he seems to be the only one with a political background, which I'm sure helps, and I've seen him in action. Um, pretty impressive. We're talking about Leland Chung, just to oh, that's right. Right. clear. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, Robert. And the, counselor who uh, and the reason I voted for him initially was because new breath of, a new spirit, if you will, and uh, but I have to say I'm very impressed with the way the city is running under uh, Mayor Moore. Very, very impressed. So that's good. And the other thing is, although we're limited, this was a surprise, but how limiting it is for the open meeting law. It, yeah. it truly is, and it causes problems, even on the so-called master plan policy orders, where you really could only talk to certain people and not the other people. and. And I understand the reason it's there, but it does inhibit forming a discussion. And when you're in front of the council, as you know, um, sometimes we all get a little carried away and maybe we say things a little too enthusiastically and behind the scenes you wouldn't necessarily do that. Right. So I think that was a surprise that that, it's not, I'm a team player. I've always played team sports, and all of a sudden you can only talk to three members on your team. I want to, let me tell you what my secret wish regarding the open meeting law is, is that, it, it, like in one week, four counselors submit an order, and the next week, five, and they just push the envelope. <laughs> As we go to jail. <laughs> no, you don't go to jail. You get somebody from the audience yeah, the, the files the usual yeah. annoying yes. thing. but. I, ultimately, I do hope that there's at least a little bit of revision to this to allow more collegiality. I, I, oh, there's I, I, nothing I totally wrong agree. with talking to people in public. I mean, the difference, well, I know you, the right. people tend to have more drama, but right. the, the theory behind the open meeting law is a good one. I, oh, I agree. It's a totally good theory. I, you know, yeah. it's been getting bashed around a lot and there are problems with it, but we want people to participate in public. I'll say, though, as a, as a, as a watcher, that I wish... Uh, the product that's introduced on a city council meeting is a form of a good solid policy order. It could be one that actually has already, people have already talked about and they, they just submit it. 
It's not voted on. And then people can amend it. They can do whatever. I like that right. very much. Yeah. But, I, you know, it's not like they've, they've sort of made, cut the deal. It's all sealed, signed, sealed, and delivered. You know, just to sort of have the best initial submission, um, you know, and if there was a way to sort of at least allow well, that to be done. We've, we've talked, uh, uh, Nadim has mentioned this, the notion of having a, an informal meeting. Maybe it's a Wednesday night and put it on TV, just what people want who watch TV, and just talk about issues like right. this. What about this? What about pre-K or whatever it is? And just talk. And nothing formal. And getting, you know, I think there's tremendous support for pre-K, for instance. Right. But I didn't know that until having discussions. Actually, actually one thing, um, I, was, I think it was at the January 27th meeting where sort of the first big issue that got sort of dumped in front of the city council was uh, coming up with some sort of idea about what's happened with the foundry building. Yes, it was. And, I, you know, and I, I kind of walked into those meetings thinking it was like where some people wanted arts, 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 other wanted STEM, STEM, STEM. I think it was Councilor McGovern put out there very, in a very clear way the, you know, that well, we're also having this discussion about pre-K and early yeah. child education. He and I have discussed that and ahead yeah, of time. You, you yeah. stepped right in and said, well, hey, that's actually not a bad thing. Oh, no, in fact, yeah. I, I think it makes all the sense in the world. Start STEAM, right. STEM, arts, whatever, at the pre-K level. Anywhere we, we have to start this. I mean, you both know, I know from your backgrounds, the difference pre-K can do for kids. And that was my thesis, actually, if, um, pre-K for uh, culturally deprived kids. And, uh, like me? Well, like me, too. <laughs> okay. But like you in particular. I didn't, didn't know your background. But, just oh, a, you mean now? Just a boy from Queens, New York. That's all. <laughs> Levittown, New York. Levittown. Born yeah. in Brooklyn. Is that right? Yes. See, we actually, back when I was a kid, uh, we were, people were born in places like Long Island City or Brooklyn, and they moved out to the island. That's, that's what happened. And some folks went out to Levittown. That's, I was one. I no, think my it wasn't folks, my idea. But my folks that. actually probably considered it, but they moved to Whitestone Flushing area, because yep. that was sort of Okay, the back to Cambridge. Back to reality, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, it's true. We were speaking of and our cultural what deprivation. <laughs> Pre-K wouldn't have helped you in that. No, it certainly no. would not have. Right. But that was that was sort of the big first issue, and that's got a long ways to go still to a resolution. Yeah, but the good news is uh, it's moving forward, yes. and you know, I again, I was really thrilled and touched by the way the manager reacted and and finding uh, some of our saving saved cash to at least start yeah. the restoration to seal the building. Because any t the, every year that you don't seal it and protect it, you're adding hundreds of thousands yeah. of dollars. What, he, what did you think about this sort of this, uh, this sort of the, the turnaround and the perception of the Cambridge Redevelopment Authority from a few years ago when it was sort of like, well, we don't know about those folks, to now it's people are seeing it as uh, the source of opportunity. Well, I have and once again, this is before I was a counselor. I have to give the city a lot of credit to doing it in a positive way. You mentioned Kathy Bourne earlier, yep. very respected. I consider Kathy a longtime friend. And in fact, she and another person I won't mention are the two people that, unless you bring the name up later, that <laughs> I wanted to, to be that kind of person. But also the people they brought on, Tom Evans yep. uh, is impressive, Kathy, uh, Kathy Madigan? I can't remember her last name. I apologize, Kathy. She has a, a background. I've known of her work, very sharp. And the board, the rest of the board, they're good, all, respected people. And they really, they're, they're hungry to actually do some interesting things. Well, and the city is interested in that. And I agree, it's a dramatic turnaround. But I give the city and the board, the board a lot of the sure. credit yeah. for doing it. And, and, you know, I even said when they came to an event at City Hall that I wish we had had some of those powers when we did the East Cambridge study or other projects in the city. It, handled properly, they are great opportunities for doing the right thing. Before we break, tell us what other committees are you on? Are you on other committees? Uh, I'm on, each of us are on approximately eight of the 11 committees, but I had transportation and public utilities, which I wanted, and I had ordinance with Dennis Benson, which I wanted. And then I'm on the ones you would expect, housing, uh, long neighborhood planning, long-term planning, 
and I'm sure I'm going to forget the others. That's and I'm okay. all public safety. We just had a very good meeting. We also had a very good meeting on housing, and yeah. Cambridge Housing Authority is doing some wonderful things. So it's it's a it's full a plate. It's a full plate. It is. Actually, one quick, just before we take a break, we have one minute left. Um, one of the things I was noticing when I was doing my long overdue kind of counting of uh, orders and resolutions from the various city councils, I hadn't even looked at it in two months. <laughs> anyway, I was doing it yesterday to kill time between doing that and my taxes. And I noticed something I don't think I'd ever seen, which was, uh, two, was one, at least one, but maybe even two council meetings in a row, mm -hmm. where every one of the nine councilors had their name on a policy order. You always see, you know, congratulations or whatever, but it was very policy oriented, and I thought that was a very it's interesting. It's very good. That there is interest in, in, in changing or upgrading the image. Let me put it that way. If you notice, there haven't been, I know we only have a few seconds, haven't been too many major disagreements or no. uh, putting no, anybody down. It's, it's and been good. The election wanted that. Yeah. Anyway, we'll be back in few seconds, so three minutes. Three okay? minutes, or so at least, come back. At least two thirds of us will be. <laughs> Which two? That's it.